Got cameras. Oh. Action. Formula One is open for business again. Good morning. Two meters this year, though. You've got to keep your distance. The hype is there. The hope. Right, oh, away we go. The target for the season is to survive. You almost accept that you're dead. Honestly, no. It cannot be the end. I'm the man that walked out of fire. Drama on and off the track. Welcome back. As the best race car, race car drivers in the world are once again the focus of a new Netflix reality show called Formula One, The Drive to Survive. Recently returned for season three. And it may be exactly what you need. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Well, that leads us to one of our favorite segments. It's time once again for 62% of America loves Ted. Joining us from NASCAR headquarters is a Fox 9 pit crew member, Ted Johnson. Good morning, Ted. Good morning, not NASCAR, Formula One. Whoops, sorry about that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ted, well, that brings me, hey, that brings me to question one. In your real life, in your plain eating real life, Homeowning, real life. Are you a car fan, like a racing car fan? Not really, but I have been to two Indy car races. Okay. So. So a little bit. A little bit, but not really. You have a shallow base of knowledge about the world. Yeah, they go fast. Okay, they go fast. That's I'll mark them down as a no on that one. Okay, so the question is: You tune on, you turn on the Netflix, you started this. How did you start with season one, buddy, or did you go right to three? Season one kind of get my feet uh, feet wet just to see if I liked it. Um, it's kind of, it's got sort of a real housewives, but then like, you know, the sports end of it. So it's like the, um, you know, those NFL ones where they go behind the scenes, but you mix both of them because they're insanely rich. Yeah. So it just hooks you right in because the guys, the teams, they're all, they're just, they're a little petty towards each other because they're all looking for that little edge. Uh, so it's just great drama, both on the track and off the track. So you you answered it right there. Some shows, you know, people will say, oh, give it two or three episodes. Were you hooked instantly? Oh, yeah, right away. Who's the, Who's your favorite or who's the star? You know, who's the Jill Zarin? Who's the Bethany Frankel of this? Well, what I like is that after season one, they kind of, you didn't really see any Lewis Hamilton, who is the best one. Uh, you don't really see him much in the first season, but the second season, they basically go through every single driver. So each episode is, you know, kind of like an, a self-contained thing. But one of, the, one of the big stars is Daniel Ricciardo. He started off as a race, race car driver for Red Bull, which is one of the good teams. And then at the end of season one, he blindsided them and left to go to rival Renault. And then at the end of season two, or end of season three, actually. Spoiler alert. Yeah. He uh, decides, um, I'm not feeling this Renault relationship, and goes to the other rival, McLaren. And let me tell you this. The relationships between the driver and the team boss is very, it's like a head coach starting quarterback relationship. I, and I don't understand that, but go ahead. Very, you and Jeff. Oh, I you understand. And Jeff. Okay, I understand that relationship. And they feel the head of the team feels very blindsided, <laughs> and here he is talking about it. The big news of the week is that Daniel Ricciardo is on his way to McLaren. What do you make of that? I've done my best in not being hurt, in not making it personal. Daniel leaving me. Hey, dude. Ricardo's on a monster salary, so from Renault's point of view, they're sort of thinking, come on, we've given you everything you've asked for and more, and you've not actually given us a chance to prove that we're on a better trajectory than McLaren. What's been, I guess, hurting the most is the fact that it's not a long-term project that I thought we had signed up for. Why McLaren, you think? Ask him. <laughs> Ask him. Ask him. Oh, Win, and then fight. He's very sad. Well, he's very sad. <laughs> and I, I think a net negative that we haven't touched on that may be a turnoff is all of these men are incredibly unattractive. That, and that's also why I bring, brought up Daniel <laughs> Ricciardo. <laughs> um, Ted, uh, I think no matter what it is, there's a learning moment there. 
What have you learned about Formula One? So, okay, so Formula One versus kind of the NASCAR and the IndyCar, each car team basically builds their car and, like, you know, does, you know, little things here and there that they think is going to make the car faster. Really, it is the car that goes fast. The driver just, you know, sits in the seat and takes it somewhere. So, and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on it. And then there are these insane crashes like this one. The, guy, the car splits in two, and he miraculously is okay. But Ted, because we don't want the emails, right? I mean, the, the, the driver plays a significant role. Oh, in the, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. I mean, he's putting his life on the line. Yeah. But, but it, is, it is interesting to see the teams uh, in the background. I mean, for example, Mercedes which is where Lewis Hamilton races for, they sold a bit of information oh. to another team. Well, the other teams didn't like that. So they filed a complaint with the Formula oh, wow. One. Formula One said, we agree with you other teams, but it, we're still going to let them race. It is just like my relationship with Jeff. <laughs> Very complicated. <laughs> hey, do you find yourself, are you going to continue watching this, Ted, or is I, this just I for the finished show? All th I finished all three seasons. And I'm looking forward to this weekend's Formula One race. You're, early come in the on, are you really? Yes. I watched two weeks ago. I was watching for two hours. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. I've, I don't know what I've become. Here he is, Ted Andretti. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Formula One to Survive uh, is available on Netflix. Kendall, are you going to watch it? Yeah, Kendall's going to watch it. I'm a big no, but that's fine. <laughs>